Hi, I'm Dan Cat, and I'm going to tell you what long-form generative art is and also what long-form plus generative art is, but more of that in just a tick. I have a whole other video about what is generative art as an introduction, so if you want that first, it's linked somewhere up here probably, and also down below for things that don't have that one. The very quick recap is this. You have an artist that writes a set of instructions, often code, that is then executed, often by a computer, that generates an art. So instructions generate art, generative art. To make it easier to understand long-form generative art, let's explain short-form generative art first. Now, short-form generative art is where you have an artist who writes a set of instructions, which then runs code, and the machine then spits out hundreds, if not thousands, or hundreds of thousands of outputs. The artist then selects which of the results are for sale and then rejects all the rest. So this is the curation step, and it's happening at this point. So they'll say, these ones are available for sale. Then you have a buyer who comes along, goes, I would like to buy that one, presses the buy button, they own it, and then off they go. This is how generative art has been done for years, with the curation step happening at this point. But now we also have long form, which looks like this. The artist creates the code and then executes it, which generates a whole bunch of outputs, and those will be used as a preview for the whole project. But the final results are, are not known. And then when a collector comes along and they like the look of those outputs, they hit the buy button, the code gets executed, and an image gets created, which is given to the artist, and then they have it. If they want another one, they press the buy button again, the code gets executed, and the image gets created. Nobody knows what the image is going to be until this interaction here happens. And then eventually, when all of these run out, if there's an addition of 200, you get to press this 200 times, then that's the end of the project. The artist doesn't have the opportunity to reject any bad outputs in this point. They don't have a curation step here. So they need to try and make sure that no bad ones can be created in the first place. So the curation step happens at this point in the code. All the outputs have to be good. Here's quite a good way to think about these two different forms, short form or long form, with the ocean of code. Here we have the short form artist in their boat. You can tell they're artist because of their hat. And they cast their code net wide, and often fairly shadow. This is the design space that they're exploring. There could be many spots in this net with holes in. These are where the bugs in the code live, the, um, the accidental infinite loops, or just the really unfortunate outputs. For example, the very last thing it may do is slap a giant white square over the top of everything, and then suddenly you have what looks like a blank output. This is risky code, but it doesn't matter because the artist gets to go over all the outputs and run it time and time again and pick only the best results. Curiously, often the most interesting results happen right next to these holes here, teetering just on the edge of disaster. You may also discover sort of a Goldilocks zone where there are no bad outputs, which is often a potential to be developed into a long form project. Speaking of which, this is what a long form project looks like. Same artist, same boat, but they cast down a very narrow and focused net that can sometimes go far deeper than the short form net we had, but it lives within a certain band. This is safe code, which can have lots of depth, a more defined design space, but you're often sacrificing the exciting danger spots just on the very edges of the hole. Some artists also use a rejection step. So there are still holes in this design space, which you can't avoid with the upfront code when it's generating due to maybe lots of combinations of various things. But you can test for and then reject anything that falls into these by like modifying something and then running the code again and running the code again until it passes all the tests of not falling into the hole. So not every artist has this extra rejection step, but some people do use that and that aids in the curation in this very narrow window. 
Neither of these is inherently better than the other one, they're just different ways of doing things. And one may transform into the other one. You might start with this short form risky code and discover a good zone to transform into like a long form project. Or you might complete a long form project and then decide to widen the net out to have more of that risky stuff and then pick some of the choice ones for, for one of ones and have those as a separate short form project. That's the quick overview of the difference between long form and short form projects. I, I hope you found that useful. I think it's also interesting to try to look at what the next evolution of that might be. Well, one way is long form plus, where the plus in this case is about community or collector curation. We'll go back to our artist in the boat with the wide net, but we're going to take the model of um, long form this time. The output is generated when the buyer hits the buy button, but this time the collector is allowed to adjust some of the settings first. For example, over here the outputs might be minimalistic, and over here they might be maximalistic right at the very edge. So the creator can change some of the parameters to start only outputting in this zone or in this zone over here. Or somebody might really like the maximalist bit here, but only a very narrow band of it here. By allowing the collector to change some parameters and seeing some of the outputs before hitting the buy button, then they're involved in the post-code creation step, but just before the actual buying step. And that blends this risky short-form project with the safe code of the long-form project. Depending on the project and the implementation, there's a couple of variations. One is that the collector tunes things down to a range and they can see the examples of the outputs within that range, but they don't know what exactly they're going to get until they hit the buy button. Another is that you narrow down to just a very single result and then that's the one that you'll get. Or somewhere in between where you may have a limited number of re-rolls within the, the range that you've selected. There's also a fourth, much less common type, which is the short form plus, where the artist creates the code with this wide net with a lot of variety, and then a collector gets to change all the parameters to settle on an output, but that output becomes the single one for the whole project, which is like a really unusual way of doing things because that's a lot of code for the artist to create for a single artwork, so it'll be priced accordingly. So two more variations. The first one is very similar. It's where the artist creates creates the code and then somebody else in the community is picked to then dial in the parameters so they can move anywhere in the design space. And once they've narrowed it down to like a single edition, then a hundred of those are created that then can then be sold to the rest of the community. The second and last one of those is again very similar. The artist creates the code or this risky code, but then the community as a whole, they then get to vote on the parameters and settings that finally get used through, you know, the most popular parameters or by using a bracket until you get down to a final result. And then a hundred or so editions of that one result is then released that the community can then buy. So that's a community led curation step. And there we have it. Short form, which is one of ones, long form, which is an addition of X amount, and then long form plus and short form plus, where the plus is the collector or the community. There will of course be evolutions beyond that and short form plus plus and long form plus plus will probably become unwieldy and then new names for those type of projects will pop up. I personally think this is a very exciting time for generative art uh, as an art form, especially for artists writing code for the community and individual collectors to interact with. There's all sorts of room for interesting collaborations there where the artist has their vision and their code and then you're handing over to a, a single collector or the community to then, then shape the actual outputs. That's an area I'm very excited to see explode some more the connection between the two. Anyway, once again, no one way is better than another way, just different tools for an artist to use in different ways based on the output they want. I hope this has been helpful. If so, hit the like button because as it turns out, it actually really helps the channel and we need more generative art channels bubbling up to the top in YouTube. Subscribe if you want more. I tend to split the channel between drawing machines, pen plotting and generative art and then general old school vlogging. But here we are doing this now and I will see you in the next video or not because chronology and the algorithm are in an internal battle. Bye. I have a whole... Dog's a pain in the ass.